In this video, we will study about the refractive media of the eye. The refractive apparatus of the eye consists of cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens and the vitreous humor. About two-third of the refraction of the light takes place by the front surface of the cornea at the junction of the air and the corneal epithelium. We have seen cornea in detail in the outer tunic of the eyeball. The link will be given in the description. Next we will see about the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor fills up the anterior and the posterior chambers of the eye and it is composed of approximately protein free plasma. It carries glucose, amino acid, some hyaluronic acid, high concentration of vitamin C and mediates the respiratory gases. The aqueous humor is formed by the active process and by diffusion from the capillaries of the ciliary processes and they are initially collected in the posterior chamber. From the posterior chamber, the fluid appears in the anterior chamber by passing through the pupil. Since the pupil is closely applied to the anterior surface of the lens, it permits the fluid to flow from the posterior to anterior chamber but not in the reverse direction. On reaching the iridocorneal angle, the fluid passes through the endothelial line spaces of the trabecular meshwork that is known as the spaces of Fontana. So from the spaces, it reaches the sinus venosa sclerae or canal of slum. From there, it goes to the anterior ciliary vein via the aqueous vein. Some amount of fluid is also absorbed through the anterior surface of the iris through the iridial venous plexus. When you see the function of the aqueous humor, it provides the nutrition to the cornea and the lens and it maintains the intraocular pressure. The normal pressure is about 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury and it is calculated by tonometry. Obliteration of the iridocorneal angle prevents the absorption of the aqueous humor. The consistent rise of intraocular tension is known as the glaucoma. When the condition persists, it produces cupping of the optic disc due to the outward bulging of the lamina cribriosa and it leads to blindness. The iridocorneal angle can be examined in vivo by a special instrument that is known as the gonioscope which comprises of a corneal microscope and a special contact lens. Next we will see about the lens. So this is the lens. The lens is a transparent, biconvex, flexible body that intervenes between iris in front and vitreous body behind. It presents anterior surface, posterior surface and the equator. So this is the equator which is a rounded border. The posterior surface is more convex than the anterior and it rests on the hyaloid fossa of the vitreous body. The central points of anterior and the posterior surface is known as the pole and the line joining the two poles forms the axis of the lens. It is anchored to the ciliary body by the zonular fibers. So these are the zonular fibers. These zonular fibers, they blend with the lens capsule around the equator and forms the suspensory ligament of the lens. The average diameter of the lens is about 1 cm. It contributes about 15 diopters to the total 58 diopter power of the eye. The advantage of the lens over other refractive media is that it can change its dioptric power for near or distant vision by adjusting the curvature of its anterior surface. The lens absorbs much of the ultraviolet light. With the age, the lens becomes increasingly yellow and harder. As a result, the power of accommodation for the near vision is lessened producing the press biopia. This defect may be corrected by use of convex spectacles. An opacity of the lens is known as cataract. Next we'll see about the structure of the lens. It consists of a capsule. Then you have anterior epithelium, 
and the lens fibers. When you see about the capsule of the lens, it is transparent, elastic basement membrane with an abundance of reticular fibers and envelops the entire lens. It is formed by the epithelial lens cells. Next we will see about the anterior epithelium. Beneath the capsule, the anterior surface of the lens is lined by a single layer of low cuboidal epithelium. And towards the equator, the epithelial cells elongate and they differentiate into lens fibers which turn meridionally and forms the bulk of the lens substance. So in this picture, you can see this is the anterior epithelium which covers the anterior surface. So this is a low cuboidal epithelium. When it reaches the equator, it forms the elongated cells and they differentiate into lens fibers and they form the bulk of the lens substance. Next, we'll see about the lens fibers. The laminated structure of the lens is due to the continuous addition of the fibers in the region of the equator. And this process goes on throughout the life. During the transformation of the lens cells into the lens fibers, the old fibers in the center, they lose their nuclei and the new fibers at the periphery possess flattened nuclei. Hence, the harder center part of the lens is known as the nucleus and the peripheral softer part forms the cortex. The nucleated and the non-nucleated lens fibers remain alive and they contain longitudinally disposed microtubules and characteristic crystalline proteins. Now we will see about the arrangement of the lens fibers. The lens is developed from the lens vesicle during the sixth week of the embryonic life by the invagination of the surface ectoderm. Thereafter, the vesicle resides from the surface and lies within the concavity of the optic cup. The anterior wall of the vesicle consists of single layer of cuboidal epithelium. The cells of the posterior wall of the vesicle, they elongate from behind forward and they are converted into primary lens fibers. These fibers eventually obliterate the cavity and meet the anterior wall. The obliteration is completed by the seventh week of intrauterine life. However, the cells of the anterior wall of the vesicle remain intact. They proliferate and migrate to the equator of the lens where they elongate and differentiate into secondary lens fibers. The primary lens fibers that grow posteroanteriorly are arranged in sheets which are expressed on both surfaces as Y-shaped sutures. The anterior Y is upright and the posterior one is inverted. The secondary lens fibers extend in a curved pattern from the suture of the anterior surface to the posterior surface. The arrangement of the fibers are those which arise from the center of Y on one surface, terminate in the extremity of the Y on the opposite surface and vice versa. The Y-shaped suture can be seen in vivo by slit lamp microscope. Next we will see about the vitreous body. It is transparent gelatinous mass which fills up the posterior four-fifth of the eyeball. It is composed of 99% of water with some salt and contains a meshwork of collagen fibrils and a mucopolysaccharide, the hyaluronic acid. A narrow hyaloid canal extends forward through the body from the optic disc to the posterior surface of the lens. The canal is occupied in the fetal life by the hyaloid artery, a continuation of the central artery of the retina, which normally disappears about six weeks before birth. The vitreous body is enveloped by the hyaloid membrane, which is attached to the ciliary epithelium and the ciliary processes and to the margin of the optic disc. In front of the ora serrata, 
the hyaloid membrane is thickened by the introduction of the radial fibers to form the ciliary zonule in this region the membrane exhibits a series of furrow for the lodgement of the ciliary processes the ciliary zonule divides into two layer a posterior layer which covers the floor of the hyaloid fossa and the anterior layer separate into zonular fibers which are attached to the lens capsule in front and behind its equator the zonular fibers they are collectively forms the suspensory ligament of the lens so the zonular fibers are attached in the periphery to the grooves between the ciliary processes and further outward extends as a linear ridge to the tips of the ora serrata